I'm going to be talking about a bike that has impressed me so much, I've declared it the best bike I've ever ridden, ever. The 2022 Specialized S-Works Turbo Levo e-bike. Working at Bike Radar, I get to test a lot of different bikes. Some are good, some less so, but it's very unusual to find one that is truly exceptional in every way. At this point, I want to thank our glorious sponsors Freewheel for supplying me with all of this ride gear. Check the links in the video description if you want to know more. Here are a few key facts on this incredible bike before you hear my full review. Along with its ludicrous 13,000 pound or $15,000 asking price, it sports a huge 700 watt hour onboard battery, plus an impressive 90 newton meter peak torque and 565 watt peak power motor. This is supplied by specialized custom developed Bros motor. It has six potential geometry settings, each tuning the chassis to different riding styles and terrain types. And it's built around a mullet wheel setup, where the front wheel is 29 inches and the rear 27.5 inches. The frame is made from Spech's Fact 11M carbon fiber and sports the brand's sidearm design. Finally, it has a drool-worthy spec that's a bold push forward for a trail bike featuring the Burley Fox 38 fork and float X2 rear shock. Let us know in the comments if you think this should even be called a trail bike. Given the larger than life price tag, I suspect I've got my work cut out to try and convince you why this bike is worthy of the praise I'm giving it. So what makes the newest Turbo Levo so great? Let's find out. First up is the FACT 11M carbon fibre frame. Although still chunky looking compared to a normal bike, it's considerably slimmer than other e-bikes despite concealing its high capacity battery in the down tube. Not only is its tubing slim considering the firepower it brandishes, the frame's outline and geometry make it look closer to the latest Stump Jumper Evo than the trail focused Turbo Levo of old. This gives it an appearance similar to a downhill missile rather than a run-of-the-mill trail bike. The frame has four neat features too. Number one, internally rooted cables. Two, a ribbed chainstay and seatstay chainstack protection. Three, bottle cage mounts. And number four, it has a built-in mudguard for the main pivot along with rock strike protection on the chainstay linkage bridge. Now, what about the 150mm travel rear suspension? Specialized has tuned it to handle the speed and weight of e-bikes, and I'm going to tell you about it now. It is controlled by Specialized FSR horse link suspension design, where the chainstay pivot sits just in front of the rear axle. It has a linearly progressive leverage rate. This basically means it's resistant to bottoming out the deeper into the travel it is. This specialized claims gives it great small bump sensitivity to improve comfort and traction, good mid-stroke support to avoid suspension dive through holes while offering bottom out resistance towards the end of the travel to reduce harshness. Finally, the axle path's rearward trajectory in the first 65 millimeters of travel should further improve comfort and compliance as the wheel is effectively swinging backwards and upwards as it moves out of the way of bumps. Although do remember, this is what Specialized claims. Keep listening and watching to find out what I think about the bike suspension. Let's move on to the Specialized developed Bros motor arguably the heart of an e-bike. The latest 2.2 iteration of the turbo full power system motor boasts 90 newton meter peak torque and 565 watt peak power with a 700 watt hour battery. Changes over the previous 2.1 motor include a brand new drive belt and much improved and redesigned waterproofing. Specialized hopes this will address the previous system's tainted reliability. The brand new Mastermind Turbo Control Unit, 
dubbed the TCU, which dishes out instructions to the motor on how much power to give and when, features a top tube mounted full color LCD display with fully customizable data fields programmed using the Mission Control smartphone app. The TCU also logs and displays metrics such as total ridden elevation and has live consumption which indicates the battery's current range. Remaining battery capacity is displayed in percentages, something users of Shimano's EP8 or Bosch's Performance Line CX systems don't benefit from. Not only is it possible to switch between three predefined modes, riders can change the assistance level using the bar controller in 10% increments, from 10 to 100% in real time. This permits smaller changes in assistance to match battery range, trail conditions, or rider preferences on the fly. Specialized claims the 700 watt hour battery can deliver up to 2,500 meters of climbing, 70 kilometers of distance traveled, and five and a half hours of ride time on a single charge. Moving on to the geometry then. What's changed on the 2022 Turbo Levo? It's had a significant makeover compared to the old model, shifting the bike into a more aggressive, slack and low shape. It uses specialized S sizing model, where rider style and height rather than inseam length are the key factors in deciding what size bike someone should ride. Because it has six potential geometry configurations, the Turbo Levo's ride characteristics can be tailored to terrain types or rider preferences. The head angle can be adjusted from 63.5 degrees to 65.5. The bottom bracket height has seven millimeters of adjustment. Seat tube angles start at 78 degrees for the smallest bike, while the largest comes in at 76.2 degrees, all suitably steep without reducing the length of the top tube too much to compensate. Now, before I talk about how the Turbo Levo rides, let's take a brief look at its gloriously illustrious spec. Up front, there's a Fox 38 factory fork with the venerable Grip 2 damper that has high and low speed compression and rebound damping adjustment. It's matched to Fox's Float X2 factory rear shock, which offers the same amount of adjustments. Drivetrain duties are taken care of by SRAM's most expensive and lightest 12 speed XX1 Eagle Access electronic wireless group set, and there's a matching Access reverb dropper post. Stopping power is provided by Magura's MT7 brakes with 200 mm rotors. The cockpit is made up with a Diety 50 mm copperhead stem, Roval Traverse SL handlebar, and Diety knuckle duster grips. The rest of the kit is taken care of by in-house specialized brands, including Roval's Traverse SL carbon wheels. A specialized bridge saddle is spec'd, along with specialized Butcher Grid Trail T9 front tire and Eliminator Grid Trail T7 rear tire. With all of that out of the way, I want to explain to you how this bike rides and why exactly I think this makes it the best bike I have ever ridden. I tested this Turbo Levo over a period of several months, racking up over 550 kilometers of distance and 18,000 meters of elevation. Let's talk about how it climbs first. Pointing uphill, the geometry, make the Turbo Levo stick to any chosen line with limited front wheel lift, even on the steepest and most technical inclines and it's easy to control with minimal rider input. Not only is the geometry spot on, it felt smooth over bumps where it damped harsh vibrations well, and the rear suspension's action was super fluttery and reactive over trail chatter, further improving comfort and grip. Although I ended up with less sag than recommended to give a more downhill focused ride, I didn't notice any negative side effects on grip or comfort as the rear end was still able to chew up bumps well. A positive consequence of running the rear end a little firmer than recommended was a slightly steeper dynamic seat tube angle, making it feel better still on the climbs. So, what about the Bros motor? Well, 
Its support is much less in your face compared to Bosch's performance line CX or Shimano's EP8. The power comes in gradually and doesn't peak with wheel spinning, rip up the trail assistance that's difficult to control. The more subtle power, even in the maximum turbo mode, translates to more grip, even over chunky, steep and slippery technical climbs, where on other motor systems you might need to tone down the power to maintain traction and keep the bike on line. To get the most out of the Turbo Levo, I've found it prefers lower gears and a higher pedaling cadence compared to other e-bike systems. I also find higher cadences not only emphasise the natural feeling power the motor provides, but also complemented my body's own personal pedaling rhythm. Dropped the support levels less than 30% and I found myself searching for the lowest of the SRAM Eagle cassette cogs to keep it moving on steeper ascents. While riding with this level of help might seem self-defeating to some, it's the best way to eke out the battery's life and in my opinion still feels massively rewarding thanks to the increased physical output required to ride. So how long does the 700 watt hour battery last in the real world? Well, using mixed levels of assistance but not exceeding 50%, the Turbo Levo 700 watt hour battery managed around 1,900 meters of climbing on a single charge. This was over roughly 4250 kilometers on a single charge over the course of around five hours of elapsed time. This is with a kitted up weight of around 78 kilograms. At 100% assistance, I managed 1,500 meters of climbing, covering 32 kilometers in just under two hours of riding. Battery life was still impressive though, and it was possible to eke out over 2,000 meters of climbing and more than 55 kilometers of riding when I kept assistance levels below 30%. Although the climbs are ludicrously fun on the Turbo Levo, it's the descents where it truly comes alive. The geometry makes its handling calm when things get rough, fast and steep. The suspension provides incredible amounts of control and traction along with unheard levels of pop for an e-bike. Its frame offers a precise and smooth connection with the trail that helps with meticulous line choice. Riding rough furrow trails where on lighter bikes the front and back wheels would get bounced uncontrollably the Turbo Levo's weight provided poise and control, allowing the suspension to absorb those bumps. This turned super gnarly trails into grip abundant descents where line choice and inspired moments of attack were frequently possible. Luckily, the Fox suspension is totally up to the job of keeping the wheels controlled, even when tackling extended raging descents that can decrease damper performance as heat builds up inside them. The Fox 38 fork chassis is extremely capable and never felt overwhelmed by the speed or weight of the bike. Its weight gives an incredibly planted feel but doesn't seem to hinder quick line and direction changes even on steeper trails. Not only is it easy to pick up the back wheel and maneuver around tight and steep turns but it's also possible to pop and jump from one line to the next across the trail thanks to that supportive mid-stroke in the suspension's travel. This makes the Turbo Levo simultaneously ride like a bump flattening plow in the rough and a hyper accurate lightweight rocket when the trail becomes pickier. The slack head tube angle and long reach and wheelbase figures all help improve stability further. This is a £13,000 or $15,000 bike and luckily for Specialized, its ride qualities don't appear to be compromised in any way. But given that price tag, you'd probably hope to expect that. How does all that hyper expensive kit fitted to it perform then? Well, the access shifting from SRAM didn't miss a beat, despite coming in close contact with plenty of rocks. The access reaver dropper purse performed excellently too, and its return speed was consistently quick. The Magura brakes have serious amounts of power on tap and help eliminate the runaway train feeling some electric bikes with lesser stoppers suffer from. The 2,200 pound Roval Traverse SL wheel set was remarkably robust, resisting both dings and buckling for the duration of the test period. I wasn't personally keen on the thinnest casing and lightest weight versions of Specialized newest butcher and eliminator tire models that were fitted. 
After only a handful of rides, it became clear they weren't suitable for the bike's weight and the wide-ranging capability of the frame and parts. The best solution was to fit tougher casing tyres. In this instance, I requested two specialised grid gravity tyres to match the widths and compounds of the trail casing versions I removed. With these fitted and set up tubeless, the bike's weight increased by 340 grams to 22.7 kilos. The marginal weight gain represented a significant improvement in general ride quality, tyre stability and control, and most importantly, puncture resistance. Tyre troubles aside, I really struggled to find anything bad about the Turbo Levo out on the trails. Hopefully, I've convinced you the Turbo Levo is a bike like no other. It not only met my expectations of what a modern bike should be capable of, but totally blew them out of the water. And I'd go as far to say the Turbo Levo is the best bike I have ever ridden today, regardless of how that bike is powered. Yes, that's right. Its performance and capability transcend the rider electric power divide. What do you think about the Turbo Levo? Is it worth its monstrous asking price or would you rather spend your cash on something else? Is there a better trail or enduro bike out there for the money? As ever, please comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a new video, you get a notification.